Hey everybody, welcome to MT Guitar. Hope you're doing well and Happy New Year. Today we're going to be doing such an essential lesson. I'm very excited to teach it because it's so powerful. It's a complete triad workout with all the major triads that you can possibly play in any given key coming from caged as well as the progressions you can play in that area so that you can play any song on any string set on any position of the fretboard. So what we want to do is we want to look at all the triads and then we're going to look at 12 songs. I'll just briefly demonstrate them as we go and you can incorporate that into the workout. You can also do the workout sort of just as a pure exercise, but it's kind of fun to throw the songs in there, songs that we'll probably all recognize because our ear re really gets involved and the triads I think kick in a little quicker. So that being said, let's start with the key of C. <clears throat> And when we talk about triads, let's define a few things right off the bat. Triads are three note chords, all right? So, tri, meaning three. Chords can be more than three notes, but triads are just three. If we stack notes by thirds, meaning intervals of a third, then we can find a triad very easily. For instance, if I take a C note and I stack two thirds in the key of C, meaning no flats, no sharps, I simply skip some letters, so I go C, skip D, go to E, that's the third. There it is. Skip F, that's the four, go to G, that's the five. There's a C major triad. All right. Now we know a C chord as this, but it's true that just the fifth, fourth, third strings is a full C chord. All right. When we keep going on the shape, we're just repeating either the first, third, or fifth. That's true with common bar chords too. <clears throat> if I play the, the common shapes of a C chord, we're only playing the first, third, and fifth. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a workout by playing a triad and then playing the four and five chords with it. And when we go to the songs, the 12 songs, we'll throw in a couple minor ones for fun. But really, I really want to just zone in on the three major chords of any given key. In the case of C, you'd have the one, four, five would be C, F, and G. Let's go through this C shape. It's an open C shape, but we still have the shape there. We're going to take the first three strings and there's a nice C triad. Happens to be G, C, E, or a second inversion. All right, now we're gonna take that and we're gonna find the four chord by going to the third, which is here, that's the E, and going up a half step, F. And then we find an F triad by seeing that it's part of the E shape here, because it's on an E string. All right, so C, four chord, now we go to the five chord, which is G, and we can't play a triad in this area. The first three strings of a G chord would just be G, B, G. So you can just go to this E shape of G here. So you have one, four, up a whole step, five, one. So one more time. All right, let's, let's think of a song here, the first song, Twist and Shout. Come on up, baby. Twist and shout, twist and shout, right? Come on, come on, baby. So that's one, four to five. Okay, next three strings here. Second, third, fourth strings of a C chord. All right, nice. That's a three, five, one, E, G, B, E, G, C. So we take the third, we go up a half step, four. We find that it's connected with this octave. It's got to be the E shape of F there. So boom, there's our four chord. One, four. The five chord is simply the three open strings of a G chord. All right. Next song you can practice with this would be like a rolling stone. Like a rolling stone. No direction home. Watch this. You can throw in the organ riff. Okay. This works anywhere, by the way, but we're just sort of taking it in the open shape for now. Lastly, well not lastly, next we have a root position triad here, fifth, fourth, third strings of a C chord, one, three, five. Take the third, go up a half step, still the E shape of F, then fifth, fourth, third strings of a G chord, of a G shape. So, okay, there you go. Last three strings, believe it or not, the C shape does go down to G, if you ever see the chord C over G. The fifth is a note in the in the C shape, right? On the bass. So that would be boom, three, three, two. 
these triads aren't as commonly used, but you still should know them. Here's that, here's the one chord. Now we'll take the third, move it up a half step. And we're gonna find the shape, it's coming from the D shape of F, all right? This isn't a full-on caged lesson, but we're just gonna zoom through, because I want you to play these triads and then practice them a while, and then I'll do some cage lessons, and I have some other cage lessons in the past as well you can check out. So there's your four chord, five chord, bass strings of a G chord. So, one, four, five, one, good. So we've done our workout on the open shape, but we've got a few more shapes to go, obviously. All right, here's the A shape of C. Now we're gonna say, first three strings conven conveniently gives us a root position triad, one, three, five, all right? We take the three, there it is, go up to the four. We see that there's a D shape or C shape, however you want to think of it. We know it's a D shape possibly because we can see the D string root here. But the C shape also shares that triad. All right, so more cage stuff that we don't need to focus on necessarily, but one chord, four chord. There we go. Five chord, we can always go up a whole step, but what if we want to just stay in the position? We can go back to our E shape. One, four, five, one. Nice. Let's try another song. How about Brown Eyed Girl? Uh, I know Brown Eyed Girl's in G, but if I go, uh, Hey, where did we go? Days when the rain came. Laughing and jumping, hey. Okay, one, four, and then one, five. You just, you know, random arpeggios. Uh, whoops. Okay, you can do those thirds in any key. Of course, it, it that's where we know Brown Eyed Girl. So it might sound a little weird in the key of C, but a good thing to do is to just transpose these triads into other keys. Uh, transpose these songs with triads into other keys as well. All right? Next, the next triad here, 3-3-3 three, three, three of the, the A shape here. Here's the third. Go up a half step to the four. That triad emerges very commonly used uh, triad in Rolling Stones, you know. And then our five, I'll show you a little trick for finding the five. In this C triad, there is a five. It's the G, it's, it's that G note. If I make that a root note, find the lowest octave, I can find my bass shape, which is the E shape, and play it there. So one, four, five, one. Next string shape here, we run into our first power chord. Power chords are great, but triads have a very clear definition that it's three notes. So the thing about power chords, unless we're playing the strict rhythm track, which a lot of times does demand a bar chord or power chord, we want to know the three notes available on every string set. So this is not enough. It's got a one, five, one, but no third. So we go to the next shape to find that, which is, happens to be the G shape. So there's our, our new C triad instead of a power chord. Okay, so we've got one chord. Now we find the third up a half step. We find an F chord with a C shape. Then we go back to the one chord. Find the five. Three, five, one. Here's the five. That becomes our root of our five chord. And an E shape emerges. If we look at the lowest, uh, lowest and highest octave, all connect us to an E shape. So one, four, five, one. What if I did free fall in, in a weird bass way? Well, I'm free. I'm free falling. Right. Um, may not be the most logical thing to do in the in the bass area of the guitar, but it's possible, and it's fun to play songs in all all areas of the neck on all strings. So, there you go, free falling like you've never heard it before. Last triad of, of this bass here would be this. This is a power chord. So let's just go to the next shape because that's not a triad. This is the next shape. It's the G shape. Here's C and the A shape. After the letter A in cage, we have the letter G, obviously, right? And we have this nice little shape here. Okay, so that's a root position triad. There's our one chord. Here's the three. Move up a half step. Four. Back to one. There's the five already done this one that's the right the D over F sharp kind of shape from 
from there. So there's our five chords. So one, four, five, one. The bass triads are a little weird, so let's move on. <laughs> All right, now we hit the E shape of C. We have this awesome triad. I love this triad here. That would be three, five, one. So that's a first inversion triad. And we're going to take the third and move it up a half step to the fourth. Boom. There's an A shape of F. Okay. But I moved up that third to, to a four, half step. I noticed the lower octave. It's an A string bass. That's one way to go about it. Okay. There's other ways, but this is, this is good for this workout. Back to the one chord. Here's the five. Make it a D shape. Cause, or a C shape actually, because we see the lower octaves here and a D shape emerges. All right, let's pick another song to look at. How about Stir It Up? One chord, four chord. Little darling, stir it up. Right? If you're gonna do some skank chords, you definitely wanna do the higher strings, the treble strings. And you probably are going to want to do either a triad or just a couple strings. You can just do the top two strings. But, you know, if you're going to do a skank part with reggae, right, you don't want to be doing... It doesn't really work as well. So there you go. One, four, five, one. Next position here. Root position triad. So one, three, five. All coming from an E an e shape, right? So we take the three, move it up a half step. The A shape of F emerges. And then we go back to the one. Here's the five. We see the lower octave of the five here. So we can find this triad in the C shape. Okay. If you don't know caged yet, that's okay. Because I want you to just play these things. And then we can talk about theory in another video. But one, four, five, one. Let's look at another song. How about, I'm going to do I Feel Good by James Brown. Um, but instead I'm going to make this a dominant seven. Because that's... So I'm just going to take this fifth, move it up to a flat seven, right? Now next is four chord, and again, here's a four chord. I'm going to make it a dominant seven. Do that little horn riff just for fun. Back to the one chord, four, uh, five chord, four chord. Right, so probably not my top choice to, to, as to where to play that that phrase or that song, but it is possible there. It's actually pretty works pretty well there. Okay, next area here would be fifth, fourth, third strings of an E shape. All right, boom. Move up that fourth back to a to a five chord. One, four, five, one. Let's try. Here comes the sun with this area. So a lot of times the melody will be in the triad. So here, go into a sus2 for a sec. And then instead of going to my four chord here, going up, I wanted to go down because the melody went down. So I'm going from here down to here, which is, I didn't plan it, but it just, it just wor it's where it wants to go because of the melody. songs in the bass is kind of tough but just showing that you could do it you could also do it here right whatever so we're kind of connecting the fretboard here with songs playing them in non-traditional areas on purpose lastly power chord of an E shape so no 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 we're gonna make it that Four chord, five chord, one chord. So all in all, the one, four, five of each would be one, four, five, one, uh, one, four, five, one, and then one, four, five, one. Okay, we've actually done all the shapes now except for the D shape, which only has that one triad and this one triad. So 
we can just skip to the C shape. And then we'll change keys in a sec. We've already done this open, but might as well do it fretted. Uh, okay, now let's go to the key of G. We're going to start with the G shape, E shape, D shape, C shape, A shape, back to the G shape. So we have a few more songs and triads to cover. Let's cover minor triads. So if I take a song like Louie Louie, it's, it's a minor on the five chord. So if I, that's really juicy there. So let's do that for this, this E shape of G. Here's a one chord, five chord. Four, sorry, four chord. Five chord becomes minor. So instead of going up a whole step, we take that third, flat it. One, four, five, minor, four, to one, oh no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do that for these strings. Nice and groovy there. We can do some slides and hammer on Okay. Gotta go. How about this one? Uh, what would this be? So instead of going like that, you're flatting the third. Pretty cool. Four chord, flat the third of the five chord. Four chord, one chord. One chord becomes is a power chord becomes here. See, so we flat that third for the minor. Now let's look at a six chord. So if we go back to Brown Eyed Girl in its, in its correct key this time. Um, let's start to combine some string sets. So here's the, here's the G, the one chord. The melody goes on that little, you know, that little hook. But you could just play the chords. Now we're gonna go to a six chord. All right, sixth chord would be E minor in the key of G. But another way to think of it is, here's the chord, three, five, one. The six is a whole step above the five. There it is. So it's either here, da, 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 da. four chord, because here's the four. So one, six, four, five. See how the root is what's guiding me. One, six, four, five. Da, 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 da. You are okay, and then what if I do it here? Uh, well, here's the five, here's the six, but now I want to go from this triad, first three strings, to second, third, fourth strings for the E minor. So now we've added the sixth chord. You can do that with that same method with any area. For instance, if I'm here. Okay, here's a one chord of a G. It's a D shape or C shape. So nice little second inversion triad. Five, one, three. So five, up a whole step, six. So one, six. Everything stays the same except the five just goes up a whole step. One chord. 6 chord. That's literally the only difference between the 1 and 6 chord is the 5 goes to the 6, the 1 and 3 stays the same. 3 goes to the 4, 5 becomes the root of a 5 chord, 1. Or if you want to go up a whole step as well. Good. You can find that here. Here's a 3, 5, 1. You move that 5 to a 6. Boom, a relative minor. Three goes to the four, right? Five becomes the root. Okay, so there's your triad workout for the key of G, and this will all be posted on the Patreon. Uh, anything else? Well, there's Wild Thing. How about... Um, wild Thing, right? Whatever. Um, any blues song, by the way, is going to be 145. All right, let's play Wish You Were Here. 
and we're going to do a 4-5-2-1 progression, then a 5-4-2-1. So a little bit tricky. I'm in the key of G. Let's start on the D shape, for instance. And I want to say, all right, let's start on the 4, okay? Here's a 3 of G. Go up a half step. There's my 4 chord. Let's just go up a whole step, make it easy. So, so you think you can tell. 4 to 5 whole step. Now we want to do a 2 chord. Here's the 1. The 2 is up a whole step. Instead of a major triad, we need to make it minor, so flat the third. Heaven from hell, back to one. Blue skies from pain. So let's recap that. Four, so four chord. Five chord, think you can tell. Heaven from hell, blue skies from pain. Now, what would you do with this information? Probably wouldn't do that exactly, but I might use these notes as indicators of where I should, where I can go if someone's playing this, you know. So you think you can tell. I could do little riffs. Heaven from hell. Right, whatever. I could use these as indications of what notes are gonna work. Every chord has at least three notes that are gonna work really well, called chord tones. So, wish you were here. We just did four, five, two, one. Now we reverse it. Five, four, two, one. That can be done anywhere. Here's the one. Four. Let's go down to the five. Five. Up to the two. Back down to the one. Five. Go so down to the four. Might as well. Up to the two. Back to the one. Or there. See, now, once you get comfortable with these, you can start moving them around with voice leading. Um, so I think that covers it, because really, we just wanted to cover a couple keys. Even when we did all the triads in the key of C, they're all movable. We just did G just to really let it sink in. And then we threw in some minor chords. I showed you the six chord and the two chord. Both of them are a whole step up from their respective lower neighbors, right? The six chord is a whole step up from the five. The two chord is a whole step up from the one. So try to think in, uh, of these things intervolically, right? If you go up a half step from the three, you're at the four, okay? If you go up a horse, whole step from the four, you're at the five. So these things are very powerful tools. I'm sort of rushing through because what are you gonna do on a video? But the uh, everything will be written out on the Patreon and that's something you can check out. So hopefully this makes sense. This was fun to put together and Good reminder to me that, you know, we can play songs anywhere at any time. It's kind of a fun exercise as well. So enjoy this workout. Let me know how it goes. Try it every day. Play along with me. Um, maybe I'll post another video soon where I'll actually play this workout with a tab above me. I'm not sure. And uh, remember to subscribe, hit the bell icon, the thumbs up, and I hope you have a wonderful day. We'll see you later. Bye.